Bitcoin is exploding right now, and so is crypto. Are you guys ready for the what's about to come next? Well, in this video, we're going to delve into some of the most important charts that you should be looking at right here, right now with me on the video. Once again, welcome back to the Crypto Blue Show. I'm Kiara Cash. Thank you for being here with me, guys. Guys, I've been really struggling to get you guys out videos, but here I am once again doing some videos for you guys. Um, this acquisition has taken up an immense amount of my time doing handover and training. So I really am just doing what I can to keep you guys going here with up to date content. So for that appreciation, I hope you guys can smash the thumbs up here and uh, I will tell you guys a little bit about that business one, uh, once the transaction has been finalized and then we will have some fun. But anyways, guys, I hope you are all having a blessed and beautiful day ahead there today. And uh, as you guys can see, been doing lots of uh, decent videos, even though they're far and few between at the moment. Lots of decent videos for you guys. Go check them out. Now, right here, right now, we are today on the Morales Money Bubbles. We are seeing the Morales Money Bubbles um, in the green. Tau is continuing to pump. Fix is pumping. All of the crypto is pumping, except for one or two. Link and HBAR are down just ever so slightly today. So not much moves in the market, but uh, from a down perspective, but anything from zero to like 12, 13% is what's busy happening from the pumping, pump mental size perspective. So today we are up at $1.834 trillion, 2.9% up for the day. Trading volume is now pushed up to about $72.3 billion. Dimension, I mean, all of these projects, these three projects, even those ones, I mean, I would definitely be investing in them, but look at where they are right now. Mantra has pumped 78%. So lots of things are busy happening out there, guys. Bitcoin is now today sitting up at $46.228,000. And that is magnificent because our level was actually 44,900 that we needed to really get above. So I guess we've done that. Can we remain above there? For the week, rest of the week and close the weekly candle above that i hope so because we're actually coming up to a resistance line that i'm going to share with you in the chart so make sure to stay tuned right to the very end you guys can see that nice big cup of green tea there for me i hope you guys drink your green tea if you like green tea let me know down below in fact if you like green tea hit the thumbs up on the video please if you don't do what you need to so today we're up 4.2% on Bitcoin, Ethereum's up 1.8%, BNB is up 2%, Solana up 3.3%, XRP up 1.1%, Lido up 1.9%, Cardano up 2%, AVAX up 1.9%. So things are moving, guys. Things are moving out there. The markets are green. Everything is uh, pretty happy. We're in a state of greed. Um, so we're now in the greed territory. I would not be surprised if we hit the all-time highs, pull back to current levels, and then made a breakout. Uh, beyond the all-time highs. I'm going to show you some evidence that I have that you may like later on in this video and show you exactly what that could look like. So first things first, this is from Fred uh, Krupa. The new nine have taken over, overtaken master or micro strategy. Bye-bye. This is very interesting. So GBTC, biggest holder. Uh, the new nine ETFs together combined have more now than MicroStrategy. Tether Holdings, publicly traded miners, Tesla, and Blocking. So these companies are, I mean, look at GBTC. GBTC owns more than double what any of the others own. So that's very interesting, right? Shout out to Bitcoin Archive. Just in BlackRock and Fidelity Bitcoin ETFs are the most successful ETF launches in 30 years with more than $3 billion in assets each. And that's according to Eric Balchunas. As you can see here, the IBIT, FBTC, and all of these listings, okay, now have um, kind of, they're pushing their way up to kind of 4,000. Um, what? $3 billion, more than $3 billion in assets each. Sorry guys, I lost my train of thought there. Um, Okay, so one of the things and why this has been happening as well, if you guys recall from some of my videos from last year when the banks were falling and collapsing, didn't you see Bitcoin rising and crypto rising? Yes, because they had to print money to save the banks. So the same thing is busy happening. We have 
the New York Community Bank, Valley National, Metropolitan, all of these banks here right now, US regional bank stocks plummet in January. Probably nothing, right? Look how much they plummeted. New York Community Bank dropped nearly 60%. This one dropped like 25, so on and so forth. Um, but the lowest is like 6%, guys. That's still quite a drop for a bank, okay? Would you not say so? I wouldn't want to see a bank drop 6% with my money in it or even 60% with my money in it. So, guys, crypto is the space to be. Crypto is the space to be. Now, of course, Mr. Jim Cramer, unlikely that Bitcoin finds its footing. E -e boom! 17% move. Now you can see the inverse head and shoulders pattern that has broken out the neckline and is continuing to make its way up. So inverse Kramer does it again as Bitcoin finds its footing and shoots back up over 45k. Legendary stuff. So, now guys, I actually watched a video and I will do this video for you um, over the weekend perhaps, but basically, but basically, Jim Cramer went and said on live television that you f he, he likes to fool the market. So he says one thing, but then the other thing happens. Okay. And this is where it's dangerous because he basically calls his community a bunch of idiots that don't know what they're doing and he trades against them. So unlike people like us in our own community, we don't trade against each other, but we do trade against the market. Now, obviously, we are mostly all not market makers, really. I mean, I'm talking about market makers moving millions of dollars at a time. Whereas hedge fund owners like Jim Cramer and others move the markets like this. So, of course, they're going to manipulate the market as they want. And when I show you that interview with Jim Cramer, he literally went on live TV and said, well, I manipulate the markets because it's legal and I can and I make money. And he's not wrong. So this is why where his stupidity actually comes from. So he's not being stupid. He's just fooling the market, really. So I need you guys to be very careful with those words that he uses, because when he says Bitcoin won't find footing, it's going down, you know, it's going to go up and vice versa. So take notice of what he's saying. Now, bringing that into this with Brit, uh, British HODL, 1% uh, Bitcoin, 1% of Fidelity assets equals 45 billion. Listen to this um, video that uh, British HODL actually says here. Today, Fidelity has put out there that their recommendation for Bitcoin is, guess what? 1%. What a twist! That means that a 1% allocation across Fidelity's AUM of 4.5 trillion is a $45 billion purchase, which in utilizing the Bank of America bull market multiple, let me know in the comments what the Bank of America bull market multiple is, would add $252,000 onto the price of Bitcoin today. Their portfolios, obviously, they have a conservative portfolio, medium risk portfolio, high risk portfolio, Portfolio and it titrates up all the way to 3%. A 3% allocation on 4.5 trillion is $150 billion from one asset manager alone. Now, this is how passive flows start because you're going to have pension funds that, that, that get Fidelity to manage their money and they're going to say, hey, we're going to, we need a conservative portfolio. And Fidelity's recommended conservative portfolio is 1% Bitcoin, which means Every single month, those pension funds are putting that money in, and what every single month, 1% is being allocated to Bitcoin. So the passive flows are starting. Today, so I hope you guys heard that light nice and clear. This $252,000 price of the existing Bitcoin price would take Bitcoin up to call it 300,000, just with a 1% allocation from one of the spot Bitcoin ETF holders. Now, that's not even when he was talking about 3%. Now, I don't have the, the content to share with you, but I saw some stuff on, um, on X basically that uh, Kathy Wood was giving you different scenarios of tranches from 1% right all the way up to potentially 80% holdings. Now imagine if BlackRock and Fidelity had to increase their um, holdings to 80%. Guys, I hope you know what that means because that is huge allocation. Now, could it get there? Yes, very likely. So some of the stuff I'm going to show you now going forward makes sense, but may it take time or are we going to see a godlike candle 
to beyond the heavens. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. Now, I want to go and show you this next cool video here from um, Jim Messina, who calls Bitcoin one of the most exciting developments of our lifetime. Let's see what he has to say over here on Fox News. I think blockchain and crypto is one of the most exciting developments in our lifetime. I think when this is all over, we're going to be known for this generation for COVID and for reimagining our financial system. I'm incredibly bullish on this. I think it's good to have a crypto winner, getting rid of some of the, the BS projects that what are about out there. Bitcoin itself. Look, I'm I'm bullish. I'm buying Bitcoin right now. I think you know anything. So in and around twenty thousand dollars, can ever get I'm, back to sixty some odd? Oh, I'll, I'll bet you my Porsche it gets back to sixty. Really? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Life truly is good if you have that to bet. Mm -hmm. um, Jim. Good point from the commentator at the end, guys. Now this video was from one year ago already, just as an example to you guys, that essentially he was saying this when it was at 31,000. Bitcoin is now sitting at 46,600. Okay, so it's starting to make a little bit more sense to us as to why we should be allocating a percentage of our portfolio. Personally, I've allocated about 90% of my entire portfolio to crypto. Okay, not only Bitcoin, no, I do have a good allocation to Bitcoin and Ethereum, but I do have a really good allocation to low caps, um, high risk caps and blue chips. So I hope you guys are enjoying the space too, because the content that I'm about to share with you is gonna blow your, your mind. And if you hold for four years or more with just your Bitcoin, you will make money. You cannot lose money, guys. Okay, unless you bought the top and sold the bottom. It's the only way you would lose money. So. Looking at the halving sign, the sine waves, it's a bold claim to say this time is different for Bitcoin. To do that, you're better get betting against three going on four cycles of the same. Everything you've seen so far, including the e launch of ETFs, have played right into the circle. Remember when they told you that ETFs were supposed to launch Bitcoin to new all-time highs instantly, instead of the launch ETFs mark the exact day of the local high. This time is different um fools you every single cycle the same villain wearing a different mask sideways period scheduled to start soon after the completion of the correction lasting about four months until the second early top in june 2024 which would be the purple dot over here okay new all-time highs after november 28th 2024 okay um and then cycle top plus minus 21 days from uh november 28 2025 now i said cycle high tops plus minus around uh 27th of october that was my personal view i don't know what your guys thoughts are but this personal cycle top that they're referring to is about 1.2 million dollars guys this cycle top is referring to plus minus about two and a half million dollars so guys i really just uh, i don't know how to express this to you but very interesting, right? November 28th, November 28th, November 28th, November 28th. Okay, we're literally getting ready to make that next move up. November 28th, the same things happen over and over and over in Bitcoin. It's a very, very nice chart. So shout out to CryptoCon for sharing this chart with us. That's really amazing. And Here's another one from CryptoCon, but this is the long-term holders behavior um, analysis. So no Bitcoin cycle has ever escaped a retest of the 150% long-term holder support line. Every cross above, including the 2020 Black Swan recovery, retested the line as support. This tells us according to the metric, price needs to visit around 31,300. The main argument against any further corrections is that ETF buying pressure will hold up the price. It's true that we've never seen ETF inflow before, so we can only wait and watch to see what the effects will have. I agree with that. In the event of a retest of the support, it should be looked at as a buying opportunity for those who need it. Damn straight, I will be one of those. So you can see I broke through, it found retest. It broke through, found retest. Broke through, found retest. Broke through, hasn't come to retest just yet. So let's see what happens in the market going forward so this is another chart from CryptoCon. very simple every cycle around this time the five-day fisher transform visits the bottom zone purple arrows dunk, 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 and dunk. 
okay or dunk 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 and currently now bitcoin hasn't made it there yet which likely means there's still room before prices bottomed out during green and blue years the indicator visits the bottom zone frequently for local lows and this time should be no exception to confirm a bottom the fisher transform needs to form a positive cross inside the green zone um, many indicators still point to low or mid 30Ks for the completion of the correction. Um, so that can happen, of course. I have said that to you guys before. But currently, we are busy breaking out of a head and shoulders pattern, and we will go and look at what that exact target is on those in a short little moment. But make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel. Thank you for uh, watching my Crypto Bliss channel. And let's delve into two more charts before we actually get onto some of the real charting stuff together okay so just like the other cycles the bitcoin mid top was made at the 60 uh, 61 IQ re retrace about 48k nothing different here so what's next on the fibonacci every mid top has at least a corrected to the orange 3a2 which is plus the 35 4, 4, 5. the mid top has come right inside the usual uh, mid top window of the cycle highlighted in green Okay, between uh, green and blue years of halving cycles. All right on track, regardless of the claims that this time will be different because of ETFs, everything continues to rhyme. Bitcoin usually comes slowly below the 382 after the mid top, low 30Ks, still most likely in the upcoming months, February to March, before pricing is um, continuing to find its stability. Now, I do partially agree with that. Okay. You can see there's the 3818 retest. There's the 3882 uh, retest. Uh, 382 retest. Are we going to come back down to the 382 retest before we and move to the upside? Very high possibility, um, but essentially here, November 28th, 2014, boom, bottom. November 28th, 2018, boom, bottom. November 28th, 2022, boom, bottom. Guys. Are the cycles actually really that different? I don't believe so. Do you guys think so? Let me know down below. Now, this is the one that I don't quite 100% agree with. Um, at this current point, uh, sorry, I do agree with this. Um, although I think there was a, a typing error here. Just so shout out to you, CryptoCon, for the this chart. But I do believe there's a, a typing error here. Now, Bitcoin shows how I believe Bitcoin price moves up in multiples of 10x, which remains right on track along the projected curve and says that Bitcoin should be at least 100k for this cycle top. It factors in diminishing returns, which shows that uh, reaching the next rungs takes double time. This is why Bitcoin was not able to reach 100k last cycle. It could have taken two cycles from the last double. It will take four cycles or 16 years to reach a million or by November 28, 2041. Um, yeah, I um, I don't, I don't, guys, I don't believe that it's going to take four cycles for us to reach a million dollars. I think it'll probably take us maybe two cycles, maybe this one and another one. I think this cycle we're going to get up to at least three hundred thousand. Um, that's my personal view. Uh, I think by twenty thirty we'll probably be at a million dollars, no problem. So. Two cycles for me, my personal view, so I don't really agree with this at all. Um, so yeah, I guess I've got other things to share and show you guys. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel for this awesome news. I'm going to show you my trades now, but let's go and have a look at the charts because Bitcoin, as you guys know, has essentially been on the daily time frame building this inverse head and shoulders pattern locally here. Okay. However, we also have the potential of, on the larger time frames, another inverse head and shoulder, which I've drawn for you guys a long time ago. Could we see a rejection from this point back down? Absolutely, we could. Um, I don't see it as being impossible. And um, yeah, look, if we were to retrace from currently where we are, which we very high possibility, that's a 12% drop, okay? That will give us the right hand shoulder and then we will have a very nice strong breakout um, of this major head and shoulders pattern essentially building here, which as you guys all know, that is my target of the head and shoulders pattern up at 58 and a half thousand kind of to 60,000. So 
that is my target. Right now, Bitcoin is pushing up. We are looking really very, very strong, juicy, healthy, happy, and positive. But I do want to note that right now we have, we are coming up to a strong resistance level. Okay. So uh, it would be a very good idea to potentially look at taking some profits here so that you can obviously walk away with some money. Um, the total crypto market cap is also looking really juicy and delicious. The altcoins have made now higher highs and higher lows consecutively. So for me, this inverse head and shoulders pattern that is forming is also looking to play out. And here is the breakout level at $534 billion. Once we break out and through that level, guys, the next target is all the way up here at the $650 billion level. So a good 100 to $150 billion could come into the space, giving us in the total crypto market cap about a 30% increase. Now, as you guys can see, I've said previously up, down, back to. So once we break out of this level, we go up to the next resistance level and we pull back down to um, the support slash breakout level and we find support before we actually go ballistic and break out. So you can see the resistance line there and why we would meet lots of resistance at that level. And once we pull back at this point, that will give us a huge opportunity to really rally, guys. So I will not be taking any profits on any altcoins. I would still be accumulating altcoins right now, at least for another three to six months. I will keep you guys closely posted on the daily basis. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Hit that notification bell. And last of all, let's go and look at my trade. So you can see here, my trade is getting ready. I have indication that there may be a potential reversal coming in with this candle volume slowing down and coming up to a slight level. So what I'm going to do now, okay, is you can see here, I've got, um, these are the trading fees and this is my profit. So it's $180. So I would say right now, I would like to take out, I would like to take out some of it. So let's go, uh, Okay, so let's see here. I'm going to say I would like to close one third of the trade. One third of the trade, that's $60. Okay, so I'm going to say here one. Okay, yeah, there you go. So it's going to give me $58. Okay, so I'm going to confirm. I'm going to close 10 contracts. So now I've taken out uh, money from the trade. I've now made bank some profit. So I've banked my profit. And because of the thing, now you can see I've realized $58, but my trade is still in profit. But now I've taken out the money from my trade that I originally put in. Okay, do you guys see that? And if I really wanted to take out the whole money, then I would take a little bit more profit. But I see this really coming up to a little bit of a resistance line. So guys, I'm not going to want to sit in a pullback all the way down back to my kind of entry level or even down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to watch and monitor this very carefully. And if I start to see any sort of heavy reversal with strong volume at this point, I will close out my trade and re-enter back in down here. And that's how a trader knows what to do when trading. You take profits. The most important thing in trading is to take profits. Okay. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And then lastly, Guys, you can use my Bybit link down below. Um, that will give you a up to $30,000 deposit bonus. And then you can also use my Bitflex link down below. When you deposit $100, you get $10 deposit bonus. Now, this is the position margin on my, it's a very small trade on XRP. I kind of got in it over here. So I've been just sitting really flat in it while it's been hovering around here. But you can see essentially on the chart that we're, we're starting to bottom out here. We're kind of getting a W pattern. For me, I think we're going to come up to this 59.60 level and meet the 200. So that's my personal view on the daily time frame. We should see this kind of over the next couple of weeks, uh, two, three weeks, come up to this level. At that point, guys, I would say that we might see some sort of heavy reversal in the crypto space. Now, lastly, on my, my massive Bitcoin chart, you guys can see we're right on track. Okay, we are literally right on track. Look at when I drew this line for us. Look how many days. We're pumping up here, 
could we pull back all the way down to the 382 at the 35,000, 36,000 dollar level? Yes, we could, especially if we don't get above this. Now, what I want to draw for you guys just very quickly is that now there is some sort of resistance line there and a little bit of kind of a resistance line there. So it too is still a falling wedge pattern. However, we could see resistance here. You could see a bit of a chop, okay? And it could do something like this before actually breaking out at the halving point. I wouldn't be surprised if this is what Bitcoin did. And that's why I'm going to say to you, this is where I would like you to actually take a little bit of profits, especially because the buying volume isn't as big as what we've previously seen. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Much beautiful, benevolent love and blessings to you all. Thank you for being here with me today on the Crypto Bliss channel. I truly appreciate you. I hope you have had fun here. It's good to see you guys again. It's good to be here for a good long video. Much love. We'll see you on the next one.